This is CJ Blink120, and today what we're going to be focusing on is setting up the Robust server for OpenSim. What Robust is going to allow us to do is set up multiple OpenSim instances and run them together in grid mode, which is going to be cool because then if you have grids running on different computers, you can connect them all to one server, and that server will manage all of the inventory, all of the assets, all of the um, friends, uh, all of the other modules um, for all of the regions that can be shared between regions. So that's what we're going to do today. Just a word of warning before we get started. Um, what we're going to be doing in this video is editing a lot of the internal OpenSim configuration files. And when you do that, you run the risk of losing all of the objects and all of the terrain and all of the work that you've done in your OpenSim region. So it's going to be a good idea that you back up all of the information that you have um, that you have on your server. So the way that you do that is you go into your region um, uh, executable file, the region server that you have running, um, and you can go ahead and say save OAR and then give it a, um, a backup file name. So you say backup one dot OAR. Right? And when you hit enter, that takes everything that you have in the server, all the terrain, all of the buildings, um, everything that you previously create, created, and it saves it in a, an archive file. Now let's say you wanted to um, uh, reload an archive after you've um, changed some settings or after you've, you've uh, kind of messed around with some stuff. What you do is say load OAR and then give that same name, backup1.oar oops, I think I spelled it wrong, load oar backup1.oar and it's going to load all of the terrains, all of the uh, objects and everything inside your region. So just keep that in mind when you before you start editing a lot of this stuff first thing that we have to do is go into our phpMyAdmin. Now if you're running WAMP server or XAMPP, um, you should know how to get to phpMyAdmin. For WAMP, you just click on the icon and go to phpMyAdmin. For XAMPP, you can open up the XAMPP control panel and go to the Admin option for MySQL, and that should take you to phpMyAdmin. Now once you're at phpMyAdmin, what you're going to want to do is create a new database. And this database should be called Robust and this robust database is going to store all of the information that is going to be generated by the robust server. Now if you set up users, um, which you probably already did if you watched the second video in this series, um, you probably have already created a user for OpenSim. I have not, so I'm going to add a user for OpenSim. So what I'm going to do is say uh, OpenSim as the username, I'm going to say localhost as the user, and then I'm going to type in a password. Um, for this I'm just going to use 12345 um, because I'm going to have to type it in a lot of different places. So we're going to add this user, and we can see the user has been added. What we're going to do now is go to edit privileges and give him privileges um, to the robust database. Actually what we can do is give him privileges to all the databases so that you know, makes it a little bit easier on us. So what we're going to say is go, and that edits, edits the privileges for uh, OpenSim at localhost. Now what we're going to do is set up the configuration files for OpenSim. So what we're going to do is go to our OpenSim directory, which in, for me is in my media drive, OpenSim, and OpenSim.0.7.4, and then in bin. Now the first thing that we have to do uh, is go ahead and open up the OpenSim.ini file. And so that's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and open up the INI file. Uh, if I can click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and edit that with Notepad++. Now in the INI file, uh, a lot of this thing, uh, these things are going to stay the same. Um, but when you scroll down to the bottom, there's the include architecture. Um, now what we're going to do is change this. We're going to comment this um, back, and so that's just putting a semicolon in front. 
then what we're going to do is uncomment grid. Now grid.ini is going to let us use the robust server. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say save here, right? Then we're going to go into config include. And then in grid, actually I think we have to comment this to grid common uh, dot ini dot example just to grid common dot ini so that uh, we get a an ini file for all the grid stuff that we can change so we're going to go ahead and change that and open this up with our word editing program okay so now what this is going to do is give us all of the common stuff that we need for all of the uh, regions that are running in our grid. So we can copy this grid .common, or grid common .ini, um to all of the grids, or all of the regions that we're using in our grid. First thing that we're going to want to do is comment out SQLite and we're going to uncomment MySQL. Now MySQL is going to be down here because we're using the MySQL uh, data, uh, the storage provider and the connection string. So what we're going to use, we're going to uncomment those two. So it's going to use those. And we need to change the connection strings here. Localhost is OK. Um, database is going to be OpenSIM. User is OpenSIM user, I believe, what we had said. No, it's just OpenSIM. So that's okay. I And then the password, as we remember, is going to be 12345. And that should be good. Um, then down here in the modules, um, starting at asset service, what we need to do is change all of these HTTP colon slash slash migridserver.com. We need to change that to 127.0.0.1 or the IP address of your server um, on your external network. What this is going to do is it's going to um, store these values um, in a place where the viewer is going to be able to access them and and be able to uh, manipulate values and, and such when you're in world. So you can leave the ports as they are, like colon 8003, but what we're going to do is do 127.0.0.1 for all of the IP addresses or the domain names. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and go through that and do all of that, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so as of now, we've changed all of those IP addresses to 127.0.0.1, and we've left all the ports the same. And hopefully what this will allow us to do is access um, the robust server um, from all of the different uh, individual region servers. So we're going to go ahead and save this, and then the next thing that we have to do is open up robust.ini, which is again going to be in the bin directory. So we're going to scroll all the way down and we're going to look at robust.ini. Yeah, actually, so robust.ini doesn't needs to be copied um, from robust.ini.example. So we're going to erase the dot example here, and we're going to say yes. And then we're going to go ahead and open robust.ini in Notepad++. Now, okay, so as soon as we run robust.exe, which is going to be the the um, the server manager. Um, it's going to start up all of these service connectors on the different ports, um, which is going to allow all of the different regions to access those ports and upload all their data to the robust server. Um, so the network port on for this is um, 8003. Now remember when we were using um, the PHP MyAdmin, we had to create that database called robust. This is where we're going to put that information in. So robust again only knows MySQL, so we're going to have to make sure we're using MySQL uh, at this point. So the database is going to be called robust. Uh, user ID again is going to be OpenSIM and the the password that we had before. 
Um, then I'm going to scroll down and make sure I'm not missing anything here. All of these are just going going to uh, be things where we're just you know listening on the on the different ports uh, map tile URL. Here's your welcome message so that whenever you log in from your viewer, you can say welcome avatar, you know, or welcome to our grid or or whatever you want to say. And it looks like, oh, and, and the, here you can change your grid name um, from the Lost Continent of Hippo um, to whatever you want to say. So I'm just going to say CJBlink120. Uh, one two zero grid. Make sure we have that, and then the grid nickname. I'm just gonna say is CJ Blink one two zero. Now each viewer has different IP addresses that it kind of lists. Um, if you need any help uh, with, you know, registering or or looking at your your economy or your resetting your password and things like that so you can uncomment all of these and this you know is going to give you um, those pages now if you don't have Wi-Fi set up this probably won't exist um, so we're gonna wait until we set up Wi-Fi to actually get that going but the f that's basically um, all we need to do to be able to get to log in um, uh, the important thing here, uh, this is probably more important than the grid name and the grid nickname, is that you don't leave this as 127.0.0.1. Why? Well, in your viewer, if it sees 127.0.0.1, it's going to think that, well, the server must be running on my own machine since it's 127.0.0.1, which is wrong. It should be running on a different machine in in most cases, right? Um, especially if we start expanding this server to um, places where, you know, uh, other users can log in remotely. So the important thing is you put your external IP address. Um, for me, um, on my network, my IP address is 192.168.1.133. So I'm going to leave it like that, colon 8002, so that the viewer knows that it's not localhost, it's actually another computer with that specific IP address. Now, if you are actually hosting from a domain name, like opensim. I don't know, mywebsite.com, that's what you would put in in there, um, because that would actually give you a little bit more redundancy in case your IP address actually did change. Um, it would just point, point to that domain name and that domain name would give um, would call the DNS server and it would tell you which IP address it's changed to. Anyway that's a little bit more in, in depth and we might get to that eventually but just make sure you change this to the IP address that, of your computer. Um, okay so now what we're going to do um, I think we're just about ready to go ahead and test this um, but just to make sure uh, we're going to go back into bin and um, make sure everything is in order and I think it is so what we're going to do is run robust.exe and this is going to start our robust server It's actually going to connect to the database um, MySQL and so if we look at the MySQL database right now we should see that robust has started to modify and add tables and it has and it'll start to uh, add and modify more tables as as we start to go along. See, we've got a few more, and it's just part of the setup process. So Robust is going to uh, start setting up all of these, and it looks like we have loaded successfully the server manager. Okay. So next thing that we have to do is make sure that our servers can connect to the robust engine. So let's go ahead and run our opensim.32-bit launch and hopefully this will run all the way through and we will see in our robust it says do you wish to join region to an estate we're going to say yes my estate and it looks like we have done that 
and it says receive map data and received uh, test region. So now that that has successfully um, completed setup, so what we're going to do is go ahead and test this and see if we can get um, another uh, server, or uh, we're going to go ahead and see if we can log in with our viewer. So we'll wait for our viewer to load here. Now we're going to have to change the login settings a little bit because we're not logging into a standalone grid anymore. We're logging into a um, a grid. So we need to go to OpenSim and we're going to say at 127.0.0.1, which is our computer, at port 8002, which is the robust port, instead of port 9000, which was our standalone port, we're going to go ahead and say apply and it looks like we've got CJBlink 120's grid. And let's go ahead and delete our other lost continent of Hippo because that doesn't exist anymore as a standalone grid. So we're going to go ahead and remove that and say OK. I'm going to log in and I'm admin user and then we'll type in password and should be able to log in. Oh, looks like Oh, you know what? I think what we might need to do is says it says login request for admin user. Um, login failed for admin user because we haven't created an admin user at, um, as for robust. So what we're going to need to do is create new users, and that's one of the things that you have to do. That's why it's a good thing to get robust set up early before you start putting a lot of users into your um, grid because you're going to have to create those new users or import the users from the standalone database. So what what we're going to do is say create user uh, admin user, and then we're going to give them a password. Make sure I type this password in right because I can't change it. Don't worry about the email. Don't worry about the UUID. It says unable to set home, but we can set our own home once we get in. It says it's been created successfully, so let's try this again. Admin admin user and then our password and looks like we should be able to log in yep there we go and so looks like our world is loading and we have our region. Okay, cool. All right, so that is how we set up the robust um, interface. Now, that's how we set up robust. Um, this has been CJBlink120. It's the fifth tutorial in the Open Simulator setup series. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and respond to this video. Um, you can also message me. Um, I try to look at all the messages I get, um, but sometimes I do get a lot of messages. So um, I do try to put videos up based on what people would like to see. So if you have something you would like to see, something you've been struggling with um, in your OpenSim setup, please feel free to mention that and I'll see if I can do a video on that. Okay, uh, thanks you guys for watching.